Once you've practiced using the basic brush a little bit and you know being able to change the size, the hardness, drawing organic versus straight lines and so on, we can get a little bit more advanced. So remember off to the side of the screen here we have the layers menu, the original background, and the brushes layer that we created. Take note that there are these little eyeballs next to the layers. So we can change the visibility. We can turn them basically on and off by clicking on that eye. So there I have them both turned off. So I can toggle back and forth between having, for example, the background layer, our white canvas, on or off. And when I do that, you'll see that we get this gray and white checkerboard. That means it's transparent. It's completely clear. So it's basically like working on a uh, simple transparency or something like that. So then I could go in, for example, and turn on the brushes layer. And you'll see that when I turn on the brushes layer, the only thing on that layer are the actual blue marks that I made with my brush. So there is nothing behind that. So if I come down and make another new layer, you'll see that it comes in named layer one again. That's because I got rid of layer one here by changing its name. If I hand, this would be called layer two and so on. Now if I want to come in and make some marks, they will be on top of these blue ones. So I'll come down to the color picker and change my color to make it a little bit more obvious. And maybe I'd like to change my brush a little bit. So if I come up to the top here again where it says 100, that was my last brush, I can make it bigger, smaller, maybe I'll make this one bigger, and I'll just take the hardness all the way down to zero so we can see the difference. Now if I come out onto layer one, I can click and drag and you know draw something with that brush. So not only was it larger, but the edges are as fuzzy as that brush's edges could be, so it's a little bit like a can of spray paint or an airbrush, very, very soft. Now that I have that, you'll see over here in my layers that I have this new layer, layer one, with these red marks that I can turn on and off. But also notice with the layers, we can change their order. It's a bit like shuffling a deck of cards. So I can take layer one, click on that in my layers menu, and when I start to move it, you'll see that the hand changes from, uh, you know, kind of like it's holding up its finger there to a fist, like it's grabbing it. And I can pull down and actually put it below the other layer. And you'll see that you have to watch for a double line to appear below the brushes layer and then above the background. Then I can let go and see how now these blue lines are going over the top of my red squiggly fuzzy line. So I could grab brushes, for example, and move that down. See how we can move back and forth. And we can also turn them all on and off. All right. Now, as you look at the brushes menu, which I can access where we have been up here at the top, or by the way, by right clicking on our canvas, I get the exact same menu. We can take a look here. So there are some fancy brushes that are pressure sensitive and great for a tablet, for example. So you're welcome to play around with those. And then as we come down, we'll see that there are many other types of brushes and they're going to vary quite a bit. So some of these have the effect of using a stiff, dry brush or chalk or something like that. Or we have things that maybe look like grass or stars, that type of thing. So I will make a new layer and I'll make sure that's on top. I'll make it active and I'll play around with that a little bit. So I'll just change my color again just so it's always easy to tell them apart. I'll make mine green. And now, you know, for example, I could, you know, grab this one here and I'll make it a little bit bigger so we can see. And you'll see this one mimics the effect of using like a piece of chalk or something like that. These still work if I want to hold down shift and only do straight lines or vertical lines, that type of thing. And I can just go back and forth over them to make them darker, okay? Now, if you're not really happy with the types of brushes you're seeing, you're getting a little bit bored with it, you can actually add to these brushes or actually remove them too. In the menu, there's a little gear in the upper right-hand corner. If I click on that, you'll get this very large 
uh, list. And down below are all of the brushes that Photoshop has automatically. So I could start adding some. So maybe right here I'll say that I'm interested in um, you know, faux finish brushes, for example. So if I click on that, Photoshop's going to ask me, would you like to replace the current brushes with these faux finish brushes? Or would you like to append, which means it will add them. So I might want to keep those original brushes, but add these to my list. So I'll say append. When I do that, you'll see this little um, scroll bar went up. And now I have a bunch of new brushes in here to play around with that I could do a quote unquote faux finish with. So this would be a veining feather, for example. Okay, I'll make it bigger so we can see what we're doing. All right. And then maybe I'll come over to my layers palette, make a new layer, change the color in my color picker, okay, and start drawing. So you'll notice if I just click, I get just a little mark, but if I click and drag, it repeats it over and over again. So I'll turn off those other layers so it's a little easier to see, and I'll use my magnifying glass for my toolbox to zoom in a little bit. So once again, grabbing my brush tool, maybe make it a little bigger, if I just click once, it makes one mark, and if I click and drag, it makes many. Now, up at the top of the screen, we also have things like opacity and flow to play around with. So flow, if I re or reduce that, say to 29, and then drag, do you see how it acts just a little bit differently? Likewise, the opacity, I can take down to something very low, and you can kind of see through it. Okay, so each brush is going to react differently based on those settings. So here's a round brush, for example, at 18%. And notice that every time I click and draw on top of that, click and let go, it's building up that color. And I could be changing that setting. Because if I have it at 100, you just click and draw, and it's completely opaque. If I change the flow here to something lower, you see how I get kind of a circle, 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 circle effect. That's because the flow is reduced. I'm going to zoom out entirely so we can see our whole screen. And I can do that very quickly by Control-0 on the keyboard, or going up to View and saying Fit on Screen. Here you'll see it says Control-0. Right. Notice that even though this is 12 by 12, it's looking relatively small on my screen. You can always check where you're at up in your tab. So I'm at 15.9% of the available size that this could be. I can then turn on all of my layers to take a look at this. And you know, feel free to play around with those layers and look at some of the brushes that Photoshop has to offer and try playing with the opacity and the colors and the flow to see what kind of interesting things you can do with just those simple brushes.